when the world was exploring new and alternative models of development and the environmental issues were being discussed for the first time in Stockholm in 1972, thousands of miles away from there, human voices echoing from the hills of Garhwal in India started writing a new script of environmentalism. Communities in the Himalayan regions of India had taken up cudgels to oppose the Western industrial model of modernization and set a new precedence of people's struggle that was to have national and global reverberations. To understand the environment movements, one needs to get into the context and background of its origin in the Garhwal Himalayas. Construction of road in the region during Sino-Indian conflict and later development efforts by the state in response to the conflict attracted many foreign-based logging companies. Felling of trees, destruction of forests and loss of subsistence and livelihood led to increase in poverty and marginalization of rural communities. This not only affected the availability of food and fuel, but also led to fall in agricultural production due to soil erosion and depletion of water resources. Conventional environmental strategy with colonial hangover of excluding communities from conservation efforts through establishment of national parks, sanctuaries and protected zone had no answers to these problems. The credit for start of the environment movement in India goes to the people and communities of the Tihri Garhwal region, especially the women who formed the mainstay of the movement and leaders like Chandi Prasad Bhatt and Sundar Lal Bahuguna. Inspired by Jay Prakash Narayan and Sarvodaya movement, Chandi Prasad Bhatt, a Gandhian social activist, founded a cooperative organization called Dasholi Gram Swaraj Sangh to foster small industries for rural villages using local resources in 1964. These efforts exposed him to bigger problems associated with environment in the region. Later, when the Alaknanda Valley witnessed devastating floods in 1970, killing more than 200 people, it was linked to the increased incidence of industrial logging and deforestation. There were increasing incidences of landslides and land subsidence, also being reported in the region. Large-scale destruction of environment because of logging and lumbering activities not only harmed natural resources and ecology, but also affected the economic interest of villagers. Amidst these growing resource crunch, when the villagers were denied access to a small number of trees to build agricultural tools, at a time when government allotted much larger plot to a sporting goods manufacturer, there was a huge outrage near the village of Mandal in the upper Alaknanda Valley in April 1973, leading to the start of India's first environment movement. The environmental conservation efforts were nothing new to India. In 1730, 363 Bishnoi villagers in Kejrali and surrounding villages of Malwa region of Rajasthan sacrificed their lives at the hands of king's soldiers by hugging Kejri trees to protect their faith and sacred trees under the leadership of Amrita Devi. Taking inspiration from the Bishnoi movement, Chandi Prasad Bhatt mobilized villagers into the forest against the government order that restricted them access to the trees and embraced and hugged the trees to prevent logging and gave the movement its name, the Chipko Andolan. The Chipko movement thereafter would not only become the spirit of strategy but also the conscience invoker of other environmental movements in India. Alongside all this, another individual having participated in freedom movement and taking inheritance from Gandhian constructive worker Meera Behen in the process of spreading awareness against caste system among the rural masses got more deeply involved with the environmental issues of the Tihri region. Sundar Lal Bahuguna gave a new vigor and shape to the Chipko movement through bigger mobilization and organization of communities and the people. He gave the slogan, Ecology is the permanent economy and replicated Chipko in other villages throughout the region. In one of the biggest protests of the movement in the village of Reni in 1974, where more than 2,000 trees were about to be felled, villagers under the leadership of Gauri Devi entered the forests and refused to move out, ultimately forcing the loggers to withdraw and prompting the state chief minister Hemvati Nandan Bahuguna to establish a committee 
to investigate deforestation. Also the woman of Adwani village, later found tying sacred threads around the trunk of trees and hugging them, not only echoing the spirit of Chipko, but also unleashing woman's power behind the movement. The eco-feminist perspective evolved by Vandana Shiva reflects women's special concerns with forest for survival, which provided the base for the Chipko movement. Even Sundarlal Bahuguna often mentioned that the real leaders of the movement were women themselves. Apart from hugging trees, people fasted and refused to budge from forests and even bandaged trees many times to reflect their exploitation. Movement gathered momentum in 1978 when women faced police firing and other tortures, and between 1972 and 79 more than 150 villages were involved with Chipko movement, resulting in 12 major protests and many minor confrontations. Sundarlal Bahugunath, through his consistent effort, played an important role in the spread of the movement. He fasted for two weeks in 1974 to protest forest policy and took a 5,000 km trans-Himalayan foot march from Kashmir to Kohima to spread the Chipko message to far greater area. In late 1980s, he started the campaign opposing the proposed construction of a dam on Bhagirathi River in Tihri. And in 1989, he began the first of series of hunger strikes to draw political attention to the dangers posed by the dam and transform the Chipko movement into Save Himalaya movement. Bahuguna went on a 45-day hunger strike in 1995, which he ended only when the Indian government under Narasimha Rao promised to appoint a review committee to look into the ecological impact. However, the promise was not kept and he went on another hunger strike and this time he broke fast only after 74 days when Prime Minister H.D. Devagauda made a personal promise to conduct a thorough review. Despite a court case which went on for over a decade, work resumed at Tihri Dam in 2001, following which Bahuguna was arrested and the dam reservoir started to fill in 2000, simultaneously emptying the hope of the locals and the movement. Bahuguna's Gandhian background, frugal lifestyle and ground-based in Tihri and Garhwal region were instrumental in giving mass appeal to the movement and for this contribution he was awarded with Padma Vibhushan in 2009. Chandi Prasad Bhatt too for his grassroots mobilization at the initial stage of the movement and for overall efforts backed the Raymond Maksai Sai award adding to the world fame of the Chipko movement. By late 1970s, Chipko had started transpiring other environmental movements in the country. In 1978, Silent Valley movement started in Kerala to protect the moist evergreen forest from being destroyed by a hydroelectric project over the Kunti Pura River under the stewardship of Kerala Rashtra Samiti Parishad and poet activist Sugatha Kumari. Similarly, Jungle Bachao Andolan of Singhabhoom in Bihar in 1982 by tribals to protect Sal and Teak forests and Apiko movement in 1983 in Uttar Kannada and Shimoga district of Karnataka against felling and commercialization of natural forests are worth mentioning. The torch of the movement reached Western Ghat in 1980s, where deforestation had started affecting sanctuaries like Badipur and Naga Hole, the biodiversity treasure trove. A 100-day Padyatra was organized in 1987-88 under the leadership of Kailash Malhotra. The ire against environmental destruction was spreading fast, and every demonstration movement was giving birth to a new one. Not only there were movements opposing the mainstream model of development reflected in movements against big dams such as anti-Tihri Dam protest and Narmada Bachao Andolan, but there were also efforts of conservation of natural resources under alternative development paradigm like the one by Tarun Bharat Sangh in Rajasthan and by Anna Hazare in Raligan Siddhi in 1970s and 80s. Apart from spontaneous splashes and protests, later environment movement also got manifested through organized efforts of NGOs like Green Doers under Ashok Khosla in 1983 and Center for Science and Environment under Dr. Anil Grewal that took up issues like urban pollution, pesticides and standards of food products in India etc. 
overall the wave that initiated in the hills of Garhwal slowly flowed down through the foothills into the greater expanse of Indian geography and generated vibrations in different corners of the country wherever there was destruction of forests or natural resources or wherever the sustenance of ecology and human livelihood was under threat.